What's up guys? This is all about the power of learning through simulations. In this video, we're gonna discuss some of the reasons to do it, but also some of the tips and tricks I've picked up over the years and some of the things that you might wanna sort of collect yourself to do a really awesome whiz bang simulation. I'll also tell you a little bit about this whole thing going on here. Uh, if that sounds like something you wanna learn, stick around. guys thanks for sticking around I am so jazzed to get right into this about simulations and simulations are just something that happens a lot in a social studies class and it's something that could really happen in any classroom whether you're English or math or science we can really build these things into those classes as well they build on a lot of the skills we talk about on this channel with gamification things like applying theme and some mechanics we're gonna put those things into action through a simulation which is kind of just like a contained gamification unit or game-based learning if you're into that it's like all similar so let's dive in here all right first up I really want to talk about this this notion this like the skills that we get through a simulation these are open-ended curriculum and what I love about that is it really gives students the chance to explore this this sort of element of realism that, that they're not on rails as learners that they can kind of go off and explore the content and sort of move through the simulation and that you don't know exactly where it's where it's headed in that simulation you've you've sort of started the ball rolling but you don't know where it's gonna end up and I I love that and think so do students because that's what you kind of experience in in that sort of game world that agency that power of choice the next thing that I absolutely love about simulations and think that we really need to get to doing these in all of our classrooms is this idea of I hate the term soft skills so I'm gonna replace that with essential skills there are so many essential skills inside a simulation right we have critical thinking just the simulation rules itself not only are they gonna deal with the content that we're working with they're also having to deal with this new game layer that you've placed over the entire experience that's critical thinking there's gonna be choices within there because as I said this is an open-ended educational experience that like you don't have them on rails they're not gonna just do one to go to two to go to three you don't know what their strategy is gonna be the choices they're gonna make and over time that's gonna produce a difference for them. And I love it, right? So we have that essential skill of critical thinking. We have communication if you work with groups and, and dealing with the other groups, right? So we have communication, collaboration, working with your team, that critical thinking. Creativity, like finding those solutions. Inside a simulation, there tends to be a lot of what is called information literacy. There's this, this knowledge that's there. You see what's happening in the simulation and you have to select the best choice for your yourself in that moment that is not an easy thing to do that kind of goes back to all of these essential skills that we have and using them in that moment so powerful so powerful okay the next thing we have to do is get to the bits the bits the little pieces you need to make a simulation come to life now depending on your simulation that you're running that you're thinking about creating that you're thinking about crafting you might need different things than what I'm laying out but as a social studies teacher one that is definitely trying to push himself to add a simulation to at least every unit if not more than one simulation I want the ability to use these materials over and over again so I gotta tell you these little like math cubes are awesome these little one inch square cubes I ended up buying like I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, five buckets, and they usually come in multicolor, and then I separated the colors into each bucket. So now I have just my green in this bucket. And so for this simulation, when we were talking about food and farming, boom, they would just grab a cube right here. We got blue and yellow here, so that's for me in this simulation, gold. These can be used a lot. And so simulation after simulation, I have endless resources. Resources I don't have to print out, resources I don't have to like think about, the kids are used to it. And then there's that consistency. So if your simulation needs some resources, these are cheap on Amazon and they never break. And it's just solid, right? Solid plastic. Next thing along that line, I got some of these. These are just one inch flat. I used these in this simulation to represent some of the buildings that they were making. So uh, on my ginormous map that I had, if they had built sort of a, a shire, 
or a hamlet, right, or a farm. These would represent them. Uh, each color represented a different thing they're constructing. Uh, I didn't have enough colors, so then I used Legos, right? Legos are so interchangeable and awesome. So what I did with the Legos, I made it so that uh, the cathedral and the church and the castle had to be built. And I used a Lego creator website that you could kind of build the sample, took a photo of it, and then all of a sudden in their directions, they knew exactly how to build the castle. So all the kids coming in knew that they had had a castle, a cathedral, or a church. Really simple. But again, those Legos, you can use them again and again. Check out some of the other videos I have on this site. If you use Legos in your classroom, post down below why Legos are just awesome in the classroom. Maybe share out an idea. Uh, you, you can pause the video right here, put that comment down below. Also, great time to do the thumbs up or the subscribe. Now, let's get going to sort of a few of the other bits that I've picked up over the years that you might like. All right, this is just awesome. I don't know where I got this idea, where it popped in my head, but a, a bingo, a bingo, drop, boom. Selects a number. Now, what do you use this for? Oh my goodness, any sort of random generator. Yes, they have it on the digital version. Yes, you can do it on some sort of classroom website, you know, timer slash whatever, whatever's. There's nothing better than calling a kid up and letting them sort of do the, do the noise, let the things drop out, boom, you read them. This particular set, I like the old school, the metal, the loudness, the wood. And then they can put it on this board, tell me the number, and on my Google Sheet, I have a list of all sorts of events. So in this simulation, they read me, you know, event number 36, I read this, it gives it a little flavor, gives little actions, and this way it also, they make it feel as, the, as though, it's like nature, you know, I'm not just saying like, ah, I'm gonna like give you guys a tornado and have some problems happen. Like, it was fate, it was fate that drew it, you drew it, it happened. Uh, but think about picking up one of these, you could use it a lot of different ways, and it's just been great. All right, this one, I think there's a lot more we can do with it, and I can't wait to sort of think through other ways to use this. But on Amazon, I picked up a bunch of different sand timers. This was key to this simulation. Knowing that I had 20, 25 students in that classroom, and I want them all to be engaged, all working at the same time, I didn't want that old board game effect where it's like, it's your turn, and now I have to just wait, and wait, and wait. So now, boom, students have a, a board. And I mean, if you're interested, we could we could do another one on the actual using of the simulation, but they, they would select an action that they're doing, they flip the timer, and now when that timer runs out, that action happens. Many of them have two, three timers. You could upgrade and have more timers. You could have better timers, so that was a bit of the technology. So there was, you started the game with two five-minute timers and one three-minute timer. And you could eventually get down to a one-minute timer for some of those. You could upgrade so that you have more of them you could have like five timers six timers right all the while like complicating the actions because now you have to keep track of four or five things that are happening when those timers drop so this whole simulation happens in real time definitely needs them to work together definitely calls upon those essential skills that are found in these learning opportunities that we call simulations and I really hope you think about adding these like I said next year I am thinking about ways to use these just in lessons if you have some ideas for that too post down below how we could use some timers in lessons not the kind of it's class timers, but almost like action timers. I'm thinking about ways to like flip these and then they get to do something, right? Like, oh, there's so much here that I just can't wait to explore, but that's for another day. The next thing that I wanted to point out that you could use is I used my screen in a little different way than I've ever used it before and I loved it. Uh, I airplayed up here, my laptop's on the other side of the room, and I put a Google Doc here that students could see, but then I had that same Google Doc on my computer. So I would just nicely type on my computer and it would show up here. These gave kids little quests, little missions to do while they're waiting for those timers to be flipped. But then I needed another timer that gave them sort of that time crunch to finish that activity. So for example, I might put like, draw a map of Europe and listing where the like Pope existed during the Dark Ages and where like the, the Vatican sort of existed. 
and I would have a timer here, and they have only so much time to like figure that information out, research that information, write it down, get it to me, and then that would help adjust their score. So again, if, if the, the simulation activity itself, you're not able to sort of win or think through that very well, you have another option of earning these fame points, which were the, the game points in this particular simulation. Which brings me to that, I also have the leaderboard kind of up here with that same style, like nicely editing it on my computer, but just up here seeing it change because of having that set up. And then here's, like I said, my timer for any of those sort of quests that I put down here. Kids had to pay attention to these quests. I didn't like announce it. I didn't say like, all right, everybody, now you have to answer these five vocab terms. I would just write it up there and students would get to work. Students noticed it and some students didn't and then they made sure they noticed it the next time it was really like sort of fun and dynamic and really called upon everyone to be present between flipping those timers making decisions learning the content handing in the content so much happening and that's just that's just a slice of it and all the while students are self-driven self-directed making choices having agency and all of them are smiling, like all of them like just bursting with energy and excitement to sort of come and do this in class. Have an experience with you and your content that you absolutely love. I don't think it gets any better than that. Do you? Can it really get better than that? I don't know. Here is the giant map. Here is where the action took place in this simulation. Everybody could sort of start where they wanted and their kingdom had to grow. This was representing sort of after the fall of the Roman Empire, all these like local warlords that sort of took over to try to become that next big thing. And they had all sorts of actions they could take, all sorts of things they had to sort of look through and decide. I mean, it was just, it was epic, it was large, it was overwhelming, but the overwhelming piece was part of it. And that's the next thing I want you to make sure you sort of get with some simulations. You, some of them you want everyone to sort of know their part, know their role down to a T, like, like you were putting on a play. That would be really important. But other times, uh, the overwhelmness, the, the, whew, the, the inequity of understanding is actually part of the realism. And I tell the students that, like, here's all the information, you have it. And if you wanna go home tonight and you wanna study this, you wanna look it over, you wanna read it, you wanna ask me questions, by all means do that. And I am here for you. But on the other hand, if you don't do those things, that's just, more realistic in, in, in some respects that you're not all gonna be at the same part. It's not my job to make you perfect at the simulation. It's my job to give you experiences that are going to enlighten you, that are gonna like show you a piece of world history that's gonna make you better and stronger. That is happening. You understanding exactly all the rules of the simulation, not, that's not my purview, that's you. So if you wanna be the best leader you can be and you wanna get the most out of this simulation and you wanna like crush others or crush that leaderboard up there, then study the rules, get to know them. Ask me questions, come in a little early, stay a little late, do what it takes. That is an awesome message, but I, one that I, like I said, I really wanna make sure you get that it's okay to sort of move on, it's okay to sort of advance. Uh, make sure you laid out the rules. I definitely like walked through them all to everyone, but I didn't make sure everyone sort of knew it. I didn't give them a quiz or an exit slip on it. Just moved on, all right? This was a two day simulation too. So as far as like grading goes, I definitely put more weight to the experience on the second day after they've had a chance to get their feet wet and get rolling in it. And it really, really works out well. If you're interested in knowing how to make a map this size or make any sort of game board this size, I used a uh, app called Splitprint on Mac. I don't know if it's for other things, but I am sure there are other similar products out there. Splitprint, I think it was three dollars in the Mac store. You literally give it an image you want. This was supposed to be just an eight and a half by 11 map. And I just said that I wanted it to be, I don't know, like 12 sheets by 10 sheets or something. And it cuts that image up like that and then prints it out and numbers them. So easy to tape together. And I had a couple students do this. They finished taping it together, I don't know, in 15 minutes. And we had our game board all set and ready to go. I hope some of these tips and tricks help you out and help you think about adding a simulation 
to your content and to your curriculum. Don't worry about getting the balance so right. I, this isn't perfect yet. This is only the second time I've run this simulation. And yeah, some of the costs were wonky and I should have made things a little cheaper or something a little more expensive. And I wrote those notes down and I'll improve it. But as far as the learning goes, as far as hitting objectives and targets, as far as giving students that opportunity of having essential skills right there embedded in the lessons, right there with their peers, right there with me, and, and, and building an experience that they're not going to forget anytime soon, you can't go wrong. So I really, really hope you guys take this video and apply it and take this video and spin it right into action if you can. They don't have to be this large by any means. Uh, many of my simulations are tiny and small and only use one bit or component. This video here is shot right at the end of the year. The students are used to a little more of my simulation. So again, don't be overwhelmed by this. Like you guys can do kind of anything you want. Sky's the limit. Uh, as always, I would love to hear from you guys. Post down below, subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up. We do lots of different videos here, all on different topics. There is the A Few Good Ideas series. That is definitely like where I'm learning and getting inspiration and sharing out those things with you guys. So check those out. There's gamification things here. There's some game reviews from my daughter and I. There are just some teacher tips that are general. If this is, if, if you want to find joy in the journey, then you found your place. Check out some of those other videos. I hope you have a great day. You guys take care.